After a year of hype, the Windows 7 operating system has finally been released. While reviews have been mostly positive, there are several good reasons why you might not want to get it just yet. Here are six reasons why. Reason number one, it still costs a lot of money. Microsoft's timing for the release of a new OS couldn't be worse from an economic point of view. With a down economy, a lot of people are out of work and paying anywhere from $100 to $200 for an operating system like Windows 7 right now could easily be considered an extravagance, especially compared to the latest version of the Mac OS, Snow Leopard, which retails for only $29. And don't forget all the countless free flavors of Linux. Reason number two, it's not completely upgrade friendly. It lacks a direct XP upgrade path, but that's not all. If you're running a 32-bit Vista right now, you can't just upgrade to 64-bit Windows 7. You're going to need to do a clean install. Granted, 64-bit operating systems have a lot of benefits. They can use all your RAM instead of just 4 gigabytes, and they generally run faster. But if you settled comfortably into your current PC, undoing everything just to make that change could be a major pain. Plus the price and inconvenience of adopting to Windows 7 might just not be worth it. Reason 3. It's not that much different. Steve Ballmer himself admitted as much last year when he described Windows 7 as Windows Vista, but a lot better. PC Mag's John Dvorak recently agreed calling it a Vista Martini. They're both right. The new taskbar is pretty cool, and there are some benefits to the new organizational system of libraries. But if you didn't groove on Vista's rearrangement of things or new eye candy, you're not going to like its evolution in Windows 7 either. We happen to think it looks pretty good, but a lot of the changes this time around are still more style than substance and represent a far less significant leap in terms of overall capability, and yes looks, than Vista did over XP. It may do some things more efficiently, but it's not going to perform any miracles. Reason 4. You just don't care about its new features. A product as far-reaching as Windows has to do as much as it can for as many people as possible, but if you're a minimalist or a hardcore do-it-yourselfer, a lot of the new stuff may just get in your way. What are the chances that you'll need its built-in multi-touch functionality on your homebrew PC? Simplified media distribution via remote media streaming and the Play 2 feature are neat but not perfect. And if you've defied the intrinsic problems to set it up another way, such as with your Xbox, you hardly need them. Home Group takes some of the annoyance out of linking the computers and devices on your home network but a tiny dash of networking know-how has always been all you've needed to avoid trouble. If you rarely plug things like cameras into your computer, device stage is pointless. Besides, it requires manufacturers to play along with Microsoft, and that's going to take time, assuming it ever happens at all. PC Mag's Jamie Landino calls device stage's smartphone support a total failure. So if you have one of those, forget about it right now. Windows 7's ability to auto-resize your windows if you drag them to the right places on the screen, called Snap, is interesting. But how often do you need exact 50-50 screen usage between two windows? When upgrades and new features solve problems that didn't exist in the first place, there's no shame in passing on them. Reason 5. You're a gamer. Okay, there's nothing in Windows 7 that makes it any worse of a gaming platform than Vista. But there aren't a lot of improvements either. There are some things you can do to improve Windows 7 gaming abilities, but is a revamped Games Explorer really the best Microsoft could do? Even if it does automatically download, but doesn't install patches for you, is it really something you need? How often did you even bother with it in Vista anyway? And if you like killing time with Inkball and Vista, that's not even included in the default install this time around. If your Vista installation works for the gaming you do, Windows 7 won't drastically improve on it. Reason 6. It's just too soon. This is probably the most important reason of all. It's been a common rule of thumb for a long time 
at least since Windows NT and probably stretching back to the DOS days, to never buy any Microsoft operating system right away. Waiting for reliable word-of-mouth reports from people who use their PCs like you use yours is smart thinking. Sure, a lot of people are saying that Windows 7 is no more than a Vista service pack, and Microsoft has a compatibility center and upgrade advisor to help you determine whether your hardware and software will have any problems interacting with Windows 7. And there's sure to be a new round of patches and service releases to fix problems not found during the final beta. But if you're going to play it safe with any piece of software, the operating system should definitely be it. It affects everything else you do. So what if you have to wait another few months for Windows 7? The peace of mind will be worth it. And Microsoft isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Even though we've listed good reasons to stay away from Windows 7 right now, there are some good reasons to go for it too. That will be the subject of the next video. For more tips and remedies, be sure to visit the PC Remedies blog.